We were born in Jean River, Roche River, Stony Point, Hay River, Pine Point, Fort Smith, Fort Resolution, Little Buffalo, Tolston River, and Fort Chippewan. We grew up here in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. I started going on the trap line when I was four, seven, eight, ten years old. My brothers and I went fishing. They were 11, 12 years old. They caught whitefish, lots of them. I got my first moose at 13. I trapped bear with my grandfather. My dad taught me to hunt and trap. I started skinning caribou with my grandmother when I was eight. We got a boat when I was 14, a little kicker. I was raised by my auntie, my grandmother, my grandfather at the mission, at the school until it burned down. I grew up on a trap line outside. That's the way we were all raised, trapping. We used to be a people that moved with the seasons, the wildlife and the water. We were as much a part of the environment as it is a part of us. Our people traveled from the Churchill River and Hudson's Bay in the east to Great Slave Lake and farther north. They spent the spring and summers following the herds and preparing for the fall and winter. They trapped all winter long, too. Even in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, I used to spend springs on the hunt in the Delta with my grandfather. I'd come back to town for school in the fall. We'd go in the boat up the channels to Jean River, Jackfish Bay, and other places. We'd use the traps until the spring, then start shooting the rats and the geese. We'd stay in a cabin up the river and be gone for a couple weeks at a time, maybe more. We could get around the whole Delta by boat, crisscrossing channels. We knew the water. We knew the shortcuts. Between the hunts, everyone would come to see each other and we'd have bannock and tea. Game was shared, everyone in the village shared. If you killed a moose, you'd give others a piece of meat for free. That doesn't happen anymore. In Fort Resolution, we had no roads, just the trail, no power, lots of tents, the mission. And that was it. In the 50s and 60s, things changed. Pine Point and the railway came in and men started working there, not going on the trap line anymore. The mission and Fort Resolution closed in 1958 and the supply barge went then too. The Roche River School burned down in 58. Roche River as a town fell apart and people moved to Fort Res. About that time, all the kids started going to school during the day in Fort Res and in Fort Smith. Then the Bennett Dam was built. Construction started in 1963, and it started generating in 1968. I can remember for three years, there was just a trickle of water coming down when they were filling up the reservoir behind the dam. The river channels, they were dry for years and the delta never went back to the way it was. Then the oil sands started. The first plant in Fort Mac started in 1967. You know, all the development in Alberta, it pushed the wildlife up here. The diamond mines came after that. Winter roads were used more and more. Trucks, trucks, trucks. The noise, the pollution, the lights, the vibrations. We stopped walking, using dogs. And now everyone uses boats and skidoos. Hunters go out for a few hours not a few weeks at a time. They used the lights from the skidoos to check their traps in the dark. Never used to do that before. All of that changed the migrations of the wildlife. The pollution, it got on the snow, melted onto their food. And the animals from the south, they passed ticks and diseases to the moose. The moose here are different too. Before the dam, we'd see a moose in every channel, every shortcut through the delta. I can taste the difference between moose from Alberta. They taste bland. And the moose from here, more healthy, less parasites. They eat better food here. All the animals do. We used to eat better food here too. 
but with the development came everything else. Easy foods, bad habits, sickness, and disease. We used to eat geese, ducks, ptarmigans, marten lynx, beavers, muskrats, snowshoe, and arctic hares, fox, moose, bear, buffalo, and musk oxen. We caught dozens of different types of fish. Trout, whitefish, jackfish, in canoe, and so many more. We used the fish for soups too, flavored with lichens. We'd use fish fats for candles. Fish is what we'd feed the dogs all winter. None of what we caught ever went to waste. Even the skin of the fish has use. And now the fish have sores. The flesh is soft, too mushy. The taste is off. We used to catch 50, 100 rats a day. Everyone would, on their own trap lines. Now sometimes five, sometimes none. Can't eat bear anymore. They eat from the dump. You might shoot a moose, but find it's sick or infested. You just leave it. The meat's bad. I haven't seen a moose in three years. You have to go 200 kilometers past Snowdrift to see caribou. Buffalo meat is all black inside and stinks. You gotta burn the carcass. The ducks and geese are gone. No more sandpipers or red-winged blackbirds. I used to kill birds with a slingshot as a child. I give them to old ladies. They'd cook them, make soup. Nothing went to waste. There's tons of ravens in these new birds. Magpies, I think. But there used to be thousands and thousands of birds. They'd stop in the delta for a couple weeks, and now flock stop for a day and leave. There's no food for them here. No bugs in the water, no plants to eat or shoreline to nest in. Not even any berries. Used to have cranberries, Saskatoon, strawberries, raspberries, and mushrooms are different now too. The land needs floods to heal and renew. The plants we used to use are gone. Water's disappearing, the land's coming up, willows and moss growing in. Spring isn't coming anymore. The delta's dry. I remember skating on the channels. They used to freeze solid. The ice was so clear you could see through it like glass. We'd skate halfway out to Mission Island, whole bunch of us on skates. Now you can't do that. The ice is piled up on the sandbars, so rough you can't even walk on it. It used to be called rubber ice, flat and strong. It's scary now. There's air pockets and lots of snow on top. That insulates the ice. It doesn't freeze and you go through. It used to freeze up in October, now sometimes just before Christmas, and not smooth. Elders said they used to shoot through the air pockets to be safe. My uncles used to set nets using jiggers. The ice was nine feet, they'd say. Now you never know. They flooded in the winter, too. Let out water from the dam to make more energy for down south. But that drowns the rats and beavers in their own homes. You find them dead. Some right inside their dens, but others frozen, trying to chew themselves out of the ice. The ice layers up with air and snow in between. There's no way to tell where it's safe anymore. We can't get around like we used to. We're now realizing how sacred the spring floods are for us. With the seasons changing and the flow of the river changing too, I feel like a part of our culture is missing. When we were at the cabin and the floods were coming, we used to all get in the boat, go to higher ground, and come back in a few days. The cabin would be full of mud, driftwood, and sand. We had to shovel it out. The delta switched four times in the last century because of the floods. I watched for it. About every eight to ten years, there would be a huge flood. Since the dam was built, there's only small floods. Sometimes the water is clear in the spring. Sandbars come up because the water moves so slowly. The slave is supposed to be swift, full of mud, full of life coming down to replenish the delta. We're losing so many of our channels because of no water. The delta was like a sponge. Water got soaked into all the little lakes. The zigzags would fill up again. The channels surged. 
The floods covered the land with nutrients when the ice jammed up and the water broke the banks. It jammed in separate places and that kept the water moving out in different ways. The plants grew again. The land got pushed back down. Willows got eaten down by the rats and the delta cycle started again. If that cycle doesn't come back, then there will be no delta. We as people are made up of four parts. Our hearts, bodies, minds, and spirits. Together, they make up our identities. Our experiences as individuals build our values, like growing up on the trap line and knowing how each plant, animal, bird, and insect are connected. Together with others, individuals become nations with indigenous knowledge systems, made up of behaviors learned from each other over time, relationships that share values and overcome struggles together, a way of reasoning, and a vision for the future. Combined again, we are the Aboriginal people of Canada, with cultures that include individuals, families, communities, and nations who interact with, for, and against each other. Together again, we are a part of humankind, with celebrated diversity and worldviews, but also global struggles. And we all live on and within Mother Earth, breathing the same air, living in harmony with animals, embracing the sun, and needing water. We are a part of the known and unknown universe, but without any of these elements, the balance is off. In the slave delta, the water is not well, and as a result, Mother Earth is not well. We, as humans, are not balancing each other's needs, but threatening each other's livelihoods. Our cultures are changing. Our knowledge is not being passed on. Our identities are at stake and our health is suffering. The Delta has a bigger burden on its shoulders than it can carry. To others, it might seem like a drop in a bucket, but to us, water means everything. <laughs>